United States Steel Corporation is happy to welcome the Radio Corporation of America as the joint sponsor tonight of one of the great events in radio history, the Theater Guild on the Air production of Hamlet by William Shakespeare. This special hour and a half broadcast stars John Gielgud, Dorothy McGuire, and Pamela Brown. And now, as the lights go down at the Velasco Theater in New York, here speaking for the Theater Guild, one of America's foremost theatrical producers, is Roger Pryor with a word about our play and players. Tonight, the Theater Guild on the Air brings you an hour and a half radio presentation of Shakespeare's Hamlet, the greatest play by the supreme dramatic genius of all time. As Hamlet, we bring you John Gielgud, whose performance of the role has been hailed as one of the greatest ever presented on the New York and London stage. It's Mr. Gilgood also who prepared the adaptation of the play that you'll hear now. As Ophelia, you'll hear Dorothy McGuire playing her second Shakespearean role for us, following her memorable Juliet on our program. The Queen is played by Pamela Brown, who's now starring on the Broadway stage with Mr. Gilgood in this season's outstanding dramatic success, The Ladies Not for Burning. Esme Percy is featured as the ghost of Hamlet's father. And now we raise the curtain on Act One of Hamlet, directed by Homer Fickett. I am dead. Thou livest. Report me and my cause aright to the unsatisfied. If thou didst ever hold me in thy heart, absent thee from felicity a while, and in this harsh world draw thy breath in pain to tell my story. And so, the tragical story of Hamlet, Prince of Denmark. Gertrude, Queen of Denmark and mother to Prince Hamlet, becoming a widow by the sudden death of King Hamlet, in less than two months married his brother, Claudius. It was a strange act of unfeelingness, and the young Hamlet, who loved and venerated the memory of his dead father, took it sorely to heart. Now I, Horatio, who had been Hamlet's bosom friend at the university, returned to Denmark. And a rumor reached my ear that an apparition exactly resembling the dead king had been seen by the soldiers upon watch on the platform of the castle walls at midnight. Who's there? Hey, answer me. Stand and unfold yourself. Bernardo? He. Have you had quiet, God? Not a mouse stirring. What is Horatio there? A piece of him. Welcome, Horatio. Good Marcellus, touching this dreaded sight twice seen of us. Horatio says tis but our fantasy, and will not let belief take hold of him. What, has this thing appeared again tonight? I have seen nothing. But last night of all, the bell then beating one. Peace. <sighs> Break thee off. Look where it comes again. The same figure like the king that's dead. It would be spoke to. Speak to it, Horatio. What art thou that usurps this time of night, together with that fair and warlike form in which the majesty of buried Denmark did sometimes march? By heaven, I charge thee, speak. It is offended. See, it stalks away. Stay. Speak. Speak, I charge thee, speak. It is gone and will not answer. How now, Horatio? You tremble and look pale. Is it not like the king? As thou art to thyself. It was about to speak when the cock grew. And then it started like a guilty thing upon a fearful summons. But look. The morn in russet mantle clad walks o'er the dew of yon high eastward hill. 
Break we our watch up. And by my advice, let us impart what we have seen tonight unto young Hamlet. For upon my life, this spirit, dumb to us, will speak to him. The young Hamlet, between grief for his father's death and shame for his mother's marriage, was overclouded with melancholy. He appeared in court in a suit of deep black, nor could he be brought to join in any of the festivities or rejoicings. My lords and ladies, their majesties give audience. Though yet of Hamlet our dear brother's death the memory be green, yet so far hath discretion fought with nature that we with wisest sorrow think on him together with remembrance of ourselves. Therefore, our sometime sister, now our queen, have we, as twere with a defeated joy, taken the wife. Nor have we herein barred your better wisdoms, which have freely gone with this affair along, for all our thanks. And now, Laertes, what's the news with you? What wouldst thou have, Laertes? My dread lord, your leave and favor to return to France. Have you your father's leave? What says Polonius? He hath, my lord, wrung from me my slow leave by laboursome petition. I do beseech you, give him leave to go. Take thy fair hour, Laertes. Time be thine. Thy best graces spend it at thy will. But now, my cousin Hamlet and my son... A little more than kin and less than kind. How is it that the clouds still hang on you? Not so, my lord. I am too much of the sun. Good Hamlet... Aye, mother. Cast thy nighted color off, and let thine eye look like a friend on Denmark. Do not forever with thy veiled lids seek for thy noble father in the dust. Thou knowst, tis common, all that lives must die, passing through nature to eternity. Aye, madam, it is common. If it be, why seems it so particular with thee? Seems, madam, nay, it is. I know not seems. Tis not alone my inky cloak, good mother nor customary suits of solemn black. No, nor the fruitful river in the eye, nor the dejected haviour of the visage, together with all forms, moods, shapes of grief that can denote me truly. These indeed seem, for they are actions that a man might play. But I have that within which passeth show. These but the trappings and the suits of woe. It is sweet and commendable in your nature, Hamlet, to give these morning duties to your father, but to persevere in obstinate condolement. It is unmanly grief. We pray you, think of us as of a father. Before God, my lord, well spoken. For your intent in going back to school in Wittenberg. It is most retrograde to our desire. Let not thy mother lose her prayers, Hamlet. I pray thee, stay with us. Go not to Wittenberg. I shall in all my best obey you, madam. Why, it is a loving and fair reply. Madam, come. This gentle and unforced accord of Hamlet sits smiling to my heart. Come, let's away. Our service freely to your command. Oh, that this too, too solid flesh would melt, thaw, and resolve itself into a dew. Oh, that the everlasting had not fixed his cannon against self-slaughter. Oh, God, God, how weary, stale, flat, and unprofitable seem to me all the uses of this world. Fie on da, fie. Tis an unweeded garden that grows to seed. Things rank and gross in nature possess it merely. That it should come to this. But two months dead, nay, not so much, not two, so excellent a king, I was to this Hyperion to a satyr, so loving to my mother, that he might not be teem the winds of heaven visit her face too roughly. Heaven and earth must I remember why she would hang on him as if increase of appetite had grown with what it fed on. Yet within a month, let me not think on it. Frailty, thy name is woman. A little month, 
where those shoes were old with which she followed my poor father's body like Niobe, all tears. Why, she, even she, oh God, a beast that wants discourse of reason would have mourned longer, married with mine uncle, my father's brother. No more like my father than I to Hercules. Within a month, ere yet the salt of most unrighteous tears had left the flushing in her gallied eyes, she married, oh, most wicked speed, to post with such dexterity to incestuous sheets. It is not, nor it cannot come to good, but break my heart. Oh, I must hold my tongue. Hail to your lordship. I am glad to see you well. Horatio, or I do forget myself. But what make you from Wittenberg, Horatio? Marcellus, Bernardo. My good lord. Sir. Good even, sir. But what in faith make you from Wittenberg? I know you are no truant. My lord, I came to see your... Marcellus, Bernardo. I pray thee do not mock me, fellow student. I think it was to see my mother's wedding. Indeed, my lord, it followed hard upon. Thrift, thrift, Horatio. The funeral baked meats did coldly furnish forth the marriage tables. Would I had met my dearest foe in heaven, or ever I had seen that day, Horatio. My father. Methinks I see my father. <gasps> Where, my lord? In my mind's eye, Horatio. I saw him once... He was a goodly king. He was a man. Take him for all in all. I shall not look upon his like again. My lord, I think I saw him yesternight. Saw? Who? My lord, the king, your father. The king, my father? For God's love, let me hear. Two nights together had these gentlemen, Marcellus and Bernardo, on their watch, been thus encountered. A figure like your father... Armed at point, exactly, Capapé appears before them, and with solemn march goes slow and stately by them. This to me in dreadful secrecy in part they did, and I with them the third night kept the watch, where, as they had delivered, the apparition comes. I knew your father. These hands are not more like. But where was this? My lord, upon the platform where we watched. Did you not speak to it? My lord, I did, but answer made it none. It is very strange. As I do live, my honored lord, tis true. Indeed, indeed, sirs, but this troubles me. Hold you the watch tonight. We do, my lord. Arm, say you. Armed, my lord. From top to toe. My lord, from head to foot. And saw you not his face. Oh, yes, my lord. He wore his beaver up. What? Looked he frowningly? A countenance more in sorrow than in anger. I would I had been there. It would have much amazed you. Very like, very like. Stayed it long, while one with moderate haste might tell a hundred. Longer, longer. I will watch tonight. Perchance will walk again. I warrant it will. If it assume my noble father's person, I'll speak to it, though hell itself should gape and bid me hold my peace. I pray you all, if you have hitherto concealed this sight, let it be tenable in your silence still. And whatsoever else shall happen tonight, give it an understanding, but no tongue. I will requite your loves. So fare you well upon the platform twixt eleven and twelve. I'll visit you. I'll do it, Your Honor. Honor. Your loves as mine to you. Farewell. My father's spirit in arms. All is not well. I doubt some foul play. Would the night were come. Till then sit still my soul. Foul deeds will rise, though all the earth overwhelm them to men's eyes. Before Hamlet fell into the way which has been related, he had dearly loved a fair maid called Ophelia, daughter of Polonius, the king's chief counselor, and sister of Laertes, who was taking ship for France. My necessities are embarked. Farewell, sister. Let me hear from you. Do you doubt that? For Hamlet, and the trifling of his favor, hold it a fashion and a toy in blood. Perhaps he loves you now, but you must fear. His greatness weighed, his will is not his own. He may not, as unvalued persons do, carve for himself, 
I shall the effect of this good lesson keep as watchman to my heart. But good my brother, do not as some ungracious pastors do, show me the steep and thorny way to heaven, whilst like a puffed and reckless libertine, himself the primrose path of dalliance treads, and wrecks not his own reed. Oh, fear me not. I stay too long. But here my father comes. Yes, surely at ease. Aboard, aboard, for shame. The wind sits in the shoulder of your sail, and you are stayed for. There, my blessing with thee. And these few precepts in thy memory, look thou character. Give thy thoughts no tongue, nor any unproportioned thought his act. Be thou familiar, but by no means vulgar. Those friends thou hast, and their adoption tried, grapple them to thy soul with hoops of steel. But do not dull thy palm with entertainment of each new hatched, unfledged comrade. Beware of entrance to a quarrel, but being in, bear that the opposed may beware of thee. Give every man thine ear, but few thy voice. Take each man's censure, but reserve thy judgment. Costly thy habit, as thy purse can buy, but not expressed in fancy. Rich, not gaudy, for the apparel oft proclaims the man. And neither a borrower nor a lender be, for loan oft loseth both itself and friend, and borrowing dulleth edge of husbandry. This, above all, to thine own self be true. And it must follow as the night the day, thou canst not then be false to any man. Farewell. My blessing season this in thee. Most humbly do I take my leave, my lord. Farewell, Ophelia. And remember well what I have said to you. It is in my memory locked, and you yourself shall keep the key of it. Farewell. What is to Ophelia here said to you? So please you, something touching the Lord Hamlet. Mary, well besought. Tis told me he hath very oft of late given private time to you. What is between you? Give me up the truth. He hath, my lord, of late made many tenders of his affection to me. Affection? Pooh! You speak like a green girl, unsifted in such perilous circumstance. Do you believe his tenders, as you call them? Oh, I do not know, my lord, what I should think. He hath important me with love and honorable fashion. I fashion you may call it. Go to, go to. I would not, in plain terms, from this time forth, have you so slander any moment leisure as to give words or talk with the Lord Hamlet. Look to it, I charge you. Come your ways. I shall obey, my lord. Yeah, bite shrewdly. It is very cold. It is a nipping and an eager air. What hour now? I think it lacks of twelve. No, it is struck. Indeed. I heard it not. It then draws near the season where in the... Sp Look, my lord. It comes. Angels and ministers of grace, defend us. Be thou a spirit of health, or goblin damned. Bring with the airs from heaven, or blasts from hell. Be thy intents wicked or charitable. Thou comest in such a questionable shape that I will speak to thee... I'll call thee Hamlet, King, Father, Royal Dane. Oh, answer me. It beckons you to go away with it. Look with what courteous action it waves you to a more removed ground. But do not go with it. No, by no means. You will not speak, then I will follow it. Do not, my lord. Why, what should be the fear? I do not set my life at a pin's fee. It waves me forth again. I'll follow it. What if it tempt you toward the flood, my lord, or to the dreadful summit of the cliff? It waves me still. Go on, I'll follow thee. You shall not go, my Hold lord. Hold off your hand. Be rude, you shall not go. My fate cries out and makes each petty artery in this body as hardy as a Nemean lion's nerve. Still am I called. Unhand me, gentlemen. I have now make a ghost of him that lets the artery in this body as hardy as a Nemean lion's nerve. Still am I called. Unhand me, gentlemen. I have now make a ghost of him that lets me. I Say away! Go on. I'll follow thee. Hamlet, Lord Hamlet! Lord, Lord, Lord Hamlet! Whither wilt thou lead me? Speak. I'll go no further. Mark me. I will. 
My hour is almost come when I, to sulfurous and tormenting flames, must render up myself. Alas, poor ghost. Pity me not, but lend thy serious hearing to what I shall unfold. Speak, I am bound to hear. So art thou to revenge when thou shalt hear. What? I am thy father's spirit. Doomed for a certain turn to walk the night and for the day, confined to fasting fires till the foul crimes done in my days of nature are burnt and purged away. Liz, Liz, oh, Liz, if thou didst ever thy dear father love, oh, God, revenge. His foul and most unnatural murder. Murder? Murder. Most foul, as in the best it is, that this most foul, strange, and unnatural. Haste me to know it. I, with wings as swift as meditation or the thoughts of love, may sweep to my revenge. I find the act. Now have it here. It is given out that sleeping in my orchard, a serpent stung me. But no, thou noble youth, the serpent that did sting thy father's life, now wears his crown. Oh, my prophetic soul, my uncle. I, that incestuous, that adulterate beast with witchcraft of his wits, with traitorous gifts, one to his shameful lust, the will of my most seeming virtuous queen. Oh. But so, methinks I sent the morning air, brief let me be, sleeping within my orchard, my custom always of the afternoon, Upon my secure hour, ah, thy uncle stole with juice of cursed heberdon in a vial, and in the porches of my ears did pour the leprous distilled. Thus uh, was I sleeping by a brother's hand of life, of crown, of queen, at once dispatched, cut off. Even in the blossoms of my sin, no reckoning made, but sent to my account with all my imperfections on my head. If thou hast nature in thee, bear it not. Ah! But howsoe'er thou pursuest this act, taint not thy mind. Nor let thy soul contrive against thy mother aught. Leave her to heaven. Fare thee well at once. The glowworm shows the matting to be near, and gains to pay his uneffectual fire. Adieu, adieu, Hamlet. Remember me. Remember thee, I, thou poor ghost, whilst memory holds a seat in this distracted globe. Remember thee, yea, from the table of my memory I'll wipe away all trivial fond records, and thy commandment all alone shall live within the book and volume of my brain, unmixed with baser matter. Yes, by heaven! Oh, most pernicious woman! Oh, villain! Villain, smiling, damned villain! My tables meet it as I set it down, that one may smile and smile and be a villain. At least I'm sure it may be so in Denmark. So, uncle, there you are. My lord, my lord! Lord Hamlet! Heaven secure him! So be it. How is my noble lord? What news, my lord? Oh, wonderful! Lord, my lord, tell it. No, you'll reveal it. Not I, my lord, by heaven. Not I, my lord. I'll say you then. Would heart of man once think it? But you'll be secret. I, by, by heaven, heaven, my lord. Is there a villain dwelling in all Denmark? <laughs> but, but he's an arrant knave. He needs no ghost, my lord, come from the grave to tell us this. These are but wild and whirling words, my lord. I'm sorry they offend you heartily. Yes, faith, heartily. There's no offense, my lord. Yes, by St. Patrick, but there is Horatio, and much offense, too. 
touching this vision here. It, it is an honest ghost, that let me tell you. For your desire to know what is between us, or master it as you may. And now, good friends, give me one poor request. What is, my lord, we will. Never make known what you have seen tonight. My lord, lord we will not. Nay, but swear it. In faith, my lord, not I. Nor I, my lord, in faith. Upon my sword. Well, by uh, his soul. Ah, boy, says thou so. Art thou there, True Penny? Come on, you hear this fellow in the cellarage. Consent to swear. Oh, day and night, but this is wondrous strange. And therefore, as a stranger, give it welcome. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than I dreamt of in your philosophy. But come, here as before. Never so help you mercy, how strange or odd soe'er I bear myself, as I perchance hereafter shall think fit to put an antic disposition on, that you at such time seeing me never shall show that you know aught of me. This not to do, so grace and mercy at your most need help you. Swear, we swear it. Rest. Rest, perturbed spirits. Oh. So, gentlemen, let us go in together. The time is out of joint. Oh, cursed spite that ever I was born to set it right. How now, Ophelia, oh. what's the matter? My lord, I've been so affrighted. With what in the name of God? My lord, as I was sewing in my closet, Lord Hamlet, with his doublet all unbraced, no hat upon his head, his stockings fouled, pale as a shirt, his knees knocking each other, and with a look so piteous in purport, as if he'd been loosed out of hell to speak of horrors, he comes before me. Mad for thy love? My lord, I do not know, but truly I do fear it. What said he? He took me by the wrist and held me hard. Then goes he to the length of all his arm. And with his other hand thus o'er his brow, he falls to such perusal of my face as he would draw it. That done, he lets me go. And with his head over his shoulder turned, he seemed to find his way without his eyes. For out of doors he went without their help. And to the last bended their light on me. Come, go with me. I will go seek the king. This is the very ecstasy of love. What, have you given him any hard words of late? No, my good lord. But as you did command, I did repel his letters and denied his access to That him. hath made him mad. Come, go we to the king. Come. Speak, Polonius, what would you? <laughs> my liege and madam, to expostulate what majesty should be, what beauty is... Why, day is day, night, night, and time is time, were nothing but to waste night, day, and time. Therefore, I will be brief. Your noble son is mad. Mad call I it, for to define true madness, what is to be nothing else but mad, but let that go. More matter with less art. Madam, I swear I use no art at all. Oh. But he is mad, tis true. Tis true, tis pity. And pity tis, tis true. A, a foolish figure, but farewell it, for I will use no art. Per pen. I have a daughter who, in her obedience and a duty mark, hath given me this. Now gather and surmise. To the celestial and my soul's idol, the most beautified Ophelia. That's an ill phrase. A vile phrase. Beautified is a vile phrase. But you shall hear. Came this from Hamlet to her? Good madam, stay a while. I will be faithful. <clears throat> Doubt thou the stars are fire. Doubt that the sun doth move. Doubt truth to be a liar, but never doubt I love. Oh, dear Ophelia, I am ill at these numbers. I have not art to reckon my groans, but that I love thee best, oh, most best, believe it adieu. Thine evermore, most dear lady, whilst this machine is to him, Hamlet. But how hath she received his love? What do you think of me? That of a man faithful and honorable. I would fain prove so. 
I he went round to work, and my young mistress thus I did bespeak, that she should lock herself from his resort, admit no messengers, receive no tokens. Which done, she took the fruits of my advice, and he repulsed a short tale to make, fell into a sadness, then into a fast, thence to a lightness, and by this declension into the madness, wherein now he raves and all we mourn for. Do you think this, Gertrude? May be very like. But look where sadly the poor wretch comes reading. Away, I do beseech you. Both away. I'll board him presently. Oh, give me leave. Gertrude. Uh, <clears throat> uh, how does my good Lord Hamlet? Well, God have mercy. Do you know me, my lord? Excellent, excellent. Well, you are a fishmonger. Not I, my lord. Then I would you were so honest a man. Honest, my lord? I, sir, to be honest as this world goes is to be one man picked out of ten thousand. That's very true, my lord. For if the sun breed maggots in a dead dog. Have you a daughter? Uh, uh, I have, my lord. Let her not walk i' the sun. Conception is a blessing, but as your daughter may conceive, friend, look to it. Still harping on my daughter, yet he knew me not at first. He said I was a fishmonger. I'll speak to him again. <clears throat> what do you read, my lord? Words, words, words. Uh, what is the matter, my lord? Between who? Uh, I mean the matter that you read, my lord. Slander, sir. For the satirical rogue says here that old men have grey beards, that their faces are wrinkled, their eyes purging thick amber and plum tree gum, and that they have the most plentiful lack of wit, together with most weak hams. Though this be madness, yet there's method in it. Uh, will you walk out to the air, my lord? Into my grave. Indeed, that is out to the air. How pregnant sometimes his replies are. Uh, my honourable lord, I will most humbly take my leave of you. You cannot, sir, take from me anything that I will more willingly part with. <laughs> except my life, except my life, except my life. Fare you well, my lord. These tedious old fools. Shall I out of the court, for by my fay I cannot reason. Oh, God, I have bad dreams. But my uncle, father, and aunt, mother are deceived. I am but mad north, northwest. When the wind is southerly, I know a hawk from a handsaw. My lord! I will prophesy he comes to tell me of the players. Uh, my lord, I have news to tell you. My lord, I have news to tell you. The actors are come hither, my lord. Buzz, buzz. Uh, uh, upon my honor. And came each actor on his ass. Uh, the, the best actors in the world. Either for tragedy, comedy, history, pastoral, pastoral, comical, historical, pastoral, scene individable or poem unlimited. You are welcome, masters. Welcome all. Oh, my old friend. What? My young lady and mistress. Come, sir, come. We'll have a speech straight. Come, give us a taste of your quality. Come, a passionate speech. Uh, what speech, my good lord? Uh, I heard thee speak me a speech once. It was, it was Aeneas, when he speaks of Priam's slaughter. Come, proceed you. Uh, Aeneas. Uh, but, as we often see against some storm... A silence in the heavens, the rack stands still, the bold wind speechless, and the orb below as harsh as death. Anon the dreadful thunder doth rend the region. Out! Out! Thou strumpet fortune! This is too long. Shout to the barbers with your beard. Prithee, say on. Come to Hecuba. But who? Ah, who had seen the Moblet Queen? The Moblet Queen. That's good. Moblet Queen is good. Shh. Run barefoot up and down, threatening the flames. Who this had seen, with tongue in venom steeped, against fortune's state, would treason have pronounced? Look, whether he's not turned his colour and has tears in his eyes. Prithee, no more. It is well. I'll have thee speak out the rest of this soon. Good my lord, will you see the players well bestowed? My lord, I will use them according to their desert. God's bodykins, man, much better. Use every man after his deserts, and who shall escape whipping? Use them after your own honor and dignity. The less they deserve, the more merit is in your bounty. Take them in. Come, sirs. Follow him, friends. We'll hear a play tomorrow. Friend. My lord. Must I hear me, old friend? Can you play... 
the murder of Gonzago. I, my good lord? We'll have it tomorrow night. You could, for a need, study a speech of some dozen or sixteen lines that I would set down and insert in, could you not? I, my lord? Very well. Follow that lord, and look you, mock him not. Good, my lord. Now I am alone. Oh, what a rogue and peasant slave am I! Is it not monstrous that this player here, but in a fiction, in a dream of passion, could force his soul so to his own conceit that from its working all his visage wand, tears in his eyes, distraction in his aspect, a broken voice and his whole function suiting with forms to his conceit, and all for nothing, for Hecuba. What's Hecuba to him, or he to Hecuba, that he should weep for her? What would he do had he the motive and the cue for passion that I have? He would drown the stage with tears and cleave the general ear with horrid speech, make mad the guilty and appall the free, confound the ignorant and amaze indeed the very faculties of eyes and ears. Yet I, a dull and muddy metal rascal, peak like John of dreams, unpregnant of my cause, and can say nothing. No, not for a king, upon whose property and most dear life a damned defeat was made. Am I a coward? Who calls me villain, breaks my pate across, plucks up my beard and blows it in my face, tweaks me by the nose, gives me the lie, the throat as deep as to the lungs? Who does me this, huh? Swoons! I should take it, for it cannot be that I am pigeon-livered and lack gall to make oppression bitter, or ere this I should have fatted all the region kites with this slave's awful, bloody, bawdy villain, remorseless, treacherous, lecherous, kindless villain, oh, vengeance! He... Why? What an ass am I. This is most brave that I, the son of a dear father, murdered, prompted to my revenge by heaven and hell, must, like a whore, unpack my heart with words and fall a-cursing like a very drab, a scullion, fly upon it. Oh. Mm. About my brain. I have heard that guilty creatures sitting at a play have by the very cunning of the scene been struck so to the soul that presently they have proclaimed their malefactions. For murder, though it have no tongue, will speak with most miraculous organ. I'll have these players play something like the murder of my father. Before mine uncle, I'll observe his looks. I'll tent him to the quick. If he but blench, I know my course. The spirit that I have seen may be the devil. And the devil has power to assume a pleasing shape. Yea, and perhaps out of my weakness and my melancholy, as he is very potent with such spirits, abuses me to damn me. I'll have grounds more relative than this. The play's the thing wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. are listening to a special hour and a half broadcast of Hamlet, produced by the Theatre Guild on the air, presented jointly tonight by the United States Steel Corporation and the Radio Corporation of America. Now the curtain rises on the second act of Hamlet, starring John Gielgud as Hamlet, 
Dorothy McGuire as Ophelia, Pamela Brown as the Queen, and featuring Esme Percy as the Ghost. The rough business which Prince Hamlet had in mind, the revenging of his father's death, did not admit of so idle a passion as love now seemed to him. Yet his mother, the Queen, who with all her faults doted upon her son, hoped that his seeming madness was caused by love of Ophelia. Not so his uncle, the king, who feared Hamlet as dangerous. And can you, Gertrude, by no drift of circumstance, get from him why he puts on this confusion? He does confess he feels himself distracted, but from what cause he will by no means speak. This night he hath beseeched your majesty to see and hear the players that are come to court. My liege and madam, by your leave. Aye, Polonius. I have closely sent for Hamlet hither, that he, as twere by accident, may here confront Ophelia. Sweet Gertrude, leave us. Her father and myself, seeing, unseen, will of their encounter frankly judge and gather if it be the affliction of his love or no that thus he suffers for. I shall obey you. Ophelia! I, my lady? I hope your virtues will bring our son to his wanted way again. To both your honors. Madam, I wish it may. I'll await your word. A gracious, so please you. We will bestow ourselves here. Ophelia, walk you there. And when you enter to him, read on this book. A show of such an exercise may color your loneliness. Aye, my lord. I hear him coming. Let's withdraw. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles by opposing, end them. To die. To sleep. No more. And by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. It is a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die, to sleep. To sleep, a chance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time, the oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the pangs of despised love, the law's delay, the insolence of office, and the spurns which patient merit of the unworthy takes when he himself might his quietus make with a bare bodkin. Who would fardels bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life but that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country, from whose born no traveller returns, puzzles the will, and makes us rather bear those ills we have and fly to others that we know not of. Thus conscience doth make cowards of us all, and thus the native hue of resolution is sickly o'er with the pale cast of thought and enterprises of great pith and moment, with this regard, their currents turn awry and lose the name of action. Soft you now, a fair Ophelia. Good, my lord. Nymph, in thy orisons be all my sins remembered. How does your honor for this many a day? I humbly thank you. Well, well, well. My lord, I have remembrances of yours that I have long and long to re-deliver. I pray you now receive them. No, not I. I never gave you aught. My honored Lord, you know right well you did. And with them, words of so sweet breath composed has made the things more rich. Their perfume lost, take these again. For to the noble mind, rich gifts wax poor when the givers prove unkind. There, my Lord. <laughs> Are you honest? My lord. Are you fair? What means your lordship? 
I did love you once. Indeed, my lord, you made me believe so. You should not have believed me. I loved you not. I was the more deceived. Get thee to a nunnery. Why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? We are arrant knaves all. Believe none of us. Go thy ways to a nunnery. You are fat, my lord. Where's your father? A at home, my lord. Let the doors be shut upon him, that he may play the fool nowhere but in his own house. Farewell. Oh, help him, you sweet heaven. If thou dost marry, I'll give thee this plague for thy dowry. Be thou as chaste as ice, as pure as snow, thou shalt not escape calumny. Get thee to a nunnery, go, farewell. Or, or if thou wilt needs marry, marry a fool, for wise men know well enough. What monsters you make of them. To a nunnery, go, and quickly too, farewell. Oh, heavenly powers, restore I you. say we will have no more marriages, those that are married already. All but one shall live. The rest shall keep as they are to a nunnery. Oh, what a noble mind is here o'erthrown. The courtiers, soldiers, scholars, eye, tongue, sword, the glass of fashion and the mold of form, the observed of all observers quite, quite down. And I of ladies most deject and wretched that suck the honey of his music vows. Oh, woe is me to have seen what I have seen and see what I have seen. Oh, now, Ophelia, oh. you, you need not tell us what Lord Hamlet said. We heard it all. Oh. And yet I do believe the origin and commencement of his grief sprung from neglected love. Love? His affections do not that way tend. My lord, after the play, for instance. But if she find him not? To England send him, or confine him where your wisdom best shall think. It shall be so. Madness in great ones must not unwatched go. But uh, by your leave, Lord Hamlet, if the king like not the play... Why then be like he like it not, Perdee? Oh. Tis excellent to set down with as much modesty as cunning. Speak the speech, I pray you, as I pronounced it to you, trippingly on the tongue. But if you mouth it, as many of your players do, I had as leave the town crier spoke my line. Oh, I hope we have reformed <laughs> that indifferently with us. Oh, oh reform it altogether. <laughs> it offends me to the soul to hear a robustious, periwig-pated fellow tear a passion to tatters, to very rags, to split the ears of the groundlings. Pray you avoid it. I warrant, Your uh, Honor. Lord Hamlet. Now, now, my lord, will the king hear this piece of work? And the queen, too, and that presently. If the players make haste. I'll hasten. And down. on, my lord. What ho, oh, Horatio. Here, sweet lord, at your service. Horatio, there is a play tonight before the king. One scene of it comes near the circumstance which I have told thee of my father's death. I pray thee, when thou seest that act afoot, even with the very comment of thy soul, observe mine uncle. Give him heedful note. For I, mine eyes, will rivet to his face. And after we will both our judgments join in censure of his seeming. Well, my lord. They're coming to the play. I must be idle. <laughs> Get you a place. Good, my lord. How fares our cousin Hamlet? Ah, uh, excellent, if it. Come hither, my dear Hamlet. Sit by me. No, good mother. Here's metal more attractive. <laughs> oh, do you mark that, my liege? Lady Ophelia, shall I lie in your lap? Nay, so please, your grace. Uh, I'm in my head on your lap. Did you think I meant country matters? Oh, you are merry, my lord. Oh, I? I, my lord. Oh, God, you're only jig maker. What should a man do but be merry? <laughs> For look you, how cheerfully my mother looks, and my father died within two hours. Nay, it is twice two months, my lord. Oh, heavens, die two months ago, and not forgotten yet. Why, then there's hope a great man's memory may outlive his life half a year. Oh, you are not, you are not. I'll mark the play. For us and for our tragedy, here stooping to your clemency, we beg your hearing patiently. Is this the prologue or the posy to a ring? It is brief, my lord. As woman's love. Failed, I must leave thee, love, and shortly too. My offering power, honored, beloved, 
and happily one as kind, for husband shalt thou. Oh, confound the rest. Such love must need be treason in my breast. In second husband, let me be accursed. None wed the second, but who kill the first? Wormwood, wormwood. Both here and hence pursue me lasting strife. If once a widow, ever I be wife. If she should break it now. Tis deeply sworn. Sweet, leave me here a while. My spirits grow dull, and fain I would beguile the tedious day with sleep. Sleep, rock thy brain, and never come mischance between us twain. Madam, how like you this play? The lady doth protest too much, methinks. Oh, but she'll keep her word. Have you heard the argument? Is there no offense in... No, 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 they do but jest. Poison in jest. No offense in the world. This is one Lucianus, nephew to the king. You are as good as a chorus, my lord. Begin, murderer. Pox, lead thy damnable faces and begin. Come, the croaking raven doth bellow for revenge. Oh, mixture rank of midnight weeds collected... With Hecate's ban thrice blasted, thrice infected, thy natural magic and dire property, unwholesome life, use up immediately. He poisons him with a garden for his estate. His name is Gonzago. The story is extended, written in very choice Italian. You shall see anon how the murderer gets the love of Gonzago's wife. The king rises. What? Fighting with false heart. Help, my lord. Give, the place. Give me some light. Light me to my chamber. Hey, hey. Horatio, it's the sea. Very well, my lord. the talk of the poison. Ah. Oh, good Horatio, I'll take the ghost's word for a thousand pound. Good, my lord. I'll safe me a word with you. The king, sir. Aye, sir, what of him? He's in his retirement marvellous distempered. With drink, sir? Uh, no, my lord, with choler. Uh, the queen, your mother, in most great affliction of spirit, hath sent me to you. You are welcome. She desires to speak with you in her closet ere you go to bed. Come hither, sirrah. Hmm? Do you see yonder cloud that's almost in shape like a camel? Uh, uh, by the mass, and it is like a camel indeed. Methinks it is like a weasel. It is back like a weasel. Or like a whale. Uh, very like a whale. And I will come to my mother by and by. They fool me to the top of my bent. I will come by and by. <laughs> Madam, madam, he approaches. He will come straight. I'll hide me even here. Pray you be round with him. I warrant you fear me not. Mother! Withdraw, I hear him come. Now, mother, what's the matter? Hamlet, thou hast thy father much offended. Mother, you have my father much offended. Come, come, you answer with an idle tongue. Go, go, you question with a wicked tongue. Why, how now, Hamlet? What's the matter now? Have you forgot me? No, by the rood, not so. You are the queen, your husband's brother's wife. And would it were not so, you are my mother. Nay, then I'll set those to you that can speak. Come, come and sit you down. You shall not budge. Ah. You go not till I set you up a glass where you may see the inmost part of you. What wilt thou do? Thou wilt not murder me. Help! Oh, 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 oh. oh now, a rat! Dead for a duck of dead! Oh, oh, oh. oh. I am slain. Oh, me, what hast thou done? Nay, I know not. Is it the king? Polonius is slain. Oh, thou wretched, rash, intruding fool, farewell. I took thee for thy better. Oh, what a rash and bloody deed is this. A bloody deed, almost as bad, good mother, as kill a king and marry with his brother. As kill a king? Ay, lady, t'was my word. Leave wringing of your hands, peace. Sit you down and let me wring your heart. What have I done that thou darest wag thy tongue in noise so rude against me? Such an act as blurs the grace and blush of modesty. Calls virtue, hypocrite. Takes off the rose from the fair forehead of an innocent love and sets a blister there. Makes marriage vows as false as dicer's own. I mean, what act that roars so loud and thunders in the index? Look here, upon this picture... And on this, 
A counterfeit oh. presentment of two brothers. See what a grace was seated on this brow. Hyperion's curls, the front of Jove himself, an eye like Mars to threaten and command, a station like the herald Mercury, new lighted on a heaven-kissing hill. This was your husband. Look you now what follows. Here is your husband, like a mildewed ear, blasting his wholesome brother. <laughs> uh, have you eyes? You cannot call it love. For at your age, the heyday in the blood is tame. It's humble and waits upon the judgment. And what judgment could step from this to this? Oh, Hamlet, speak no more. Thou turnest my very eyes into my soul, and there I see such black and grainy spots as will not leave their taste. A murderer and a villain, a slave. There is not twentieth part the tithe of your precepts. As will not leave their taste. A murderer and a villain, a slave. There is not twentieth part the tithe of your precepts. As a murderer and a villain, a slave. There is not twentieth part the tithe of your precedent laws. Oh, speak no more. These words like daggers enter in my ears. No more, sweet Hamlet. The vice of kings, a cut purse of the empire and the rule, that from the shelf a precious diadem stole and put it in his pocket. No more. A king of shreds and patches. Save me and hover o'er me with your wings, you heavenly guards. What would you... Gracious figure. Alas, he's mad. Do not forget, this visitation is but to whet thy almost blunted purpose. Hamlet, oh, gentle son. That look, amazement on thy mother sits. Oh, step between her and her fighting soul. Speak to her, Hamlet. How is it with you? Lady? Alas, how is it with you that you do bend your eye on vacancy? Whereon do you look? Do you see nothing there? Nothing at all. That's all that is. My father, in his habit as he lived, look where he goes, even now. Out at the portal. This is the very coinage of your brain, this bodiless creation. Ecstasy is very cunning in... Ecstasy! Mother, for love of grace, lay not that flattering unction to your soul that not your trespass, but my madness speaks. Confess yourself to heaven. Repent what's past. Avoid what is to come. Oh, Hamlet, thou hast cleft my heart in twain. Oh, throw away the worser part of it and live the purer with the other half. Good night. I go not to my uncle's bed. Assume a virtue if you have it not. Once more, good night. <laughs> and when you are desirous to be blessed, I'll blessing beg of you. <laughs> Once more, good night. I must be cruel only to be kind. Thus bad begins, and worse remains behind. Good night. Mother. How oh, now? What has befallen? Most royal, sir. Hamlet in madness hath Bologna slain. Oh, heavy deed. Bring the body into the chapel. Where the dead body is bestowed, my lord, we cannot get from him. Thou, Hamlet. Where's Polonius? At supper. At supper where? Not where he eats, but where he is eaten. A certain convocation of politic worms are in at him. Where is Polonius? In heaven. Send thither to sea. If your messenger find him not there, seek him in the other place yourself. But indeed, if you find him not within this month, you shall nose him as you go upstairs into the lobby. Go seek him there, someone. He will stay till you come. Hamlet. The bark is ready. And the wind at help for England. For England! Aye, Hamlet. Good. So is it if thou knewst our purposes. Uh, I see a cherub that sees them. But come for England! Farewell, dear mother. Thy loving father, Hamlet. My mother? Father and mother is man and wife. Man and wife is one flesh. And so, my mother, come for England! Tempt him with speed aboard. I'll have him hence tonight. Your servant, my lord. And England, if my love thou holdst it aught... Thou mayst not coldly set our sovereign process. 
which imports at full by letters congering to that effect the present death of Hamlet. Do it, England. For like the hectic in my blood he rages, and thou must cure me. Till I know it is done. However, my haps, my joys were ne'er begun. listening to a special hour and a half broadcast of Hamlet, produced by the Theatre Guild on the air and presented jointly tonight by the United States Steel Corporation and the Radio Corporation of America. We pause now for station identification. Now the curtain rises on the third act of Hamlet, starring John Gielgud as Hamlet, Dorothy McGuire as Ophelia, Pamela Brown as the Queen, and featuring Esme Percy as the Ghost. That her father, Polonius, should die a violent death, and by the hands of the prince whom she loved, so affected the tender young maid, Ophelia, that in a little time she grew distracted. She would go about the court as if she had no memory of what happened to her, giving flowers to the ladies and singing songs of love and death. I will not speak with her, Horatio. Madam, her mood will needs be pity. What would she have? Oh, let her come in. Thank you, madam. Where is the beauteous majesty of Denmark? How now, Ophelia? Sweet lady, what imports this song? Say it, nay, pray you, Mark. He is dead and gone, lady. He is dead and gone. At his head of grass green turf, at his heels a stone. <laughs> Gertrude. <laughs> Look here, my lord. Alack, and fire for shame. Young men will do it, for tomorrow is St. Valentine's Day. How do you, pretty lady? Well, God guild you. They say the owl was a baker's daughter. Lord, we know what we are, but know not what we may be. God be at your table. How long hath she been thus? I hope all will be well. We must be patient. Oh, but I cannot choose but weep to think that they would lay him in the cold ground. My brother shall know of it. And so I thank you for your good counsel. Come, my coach. Good night, lady. Good night, sweet ladies. Good night. Good night. Horatio. My lord. Follow her close. Give her a good watch, I pray you. Aye, my lord. Gertrude, Gertrude, when sorrows come, they come not single spies, but in battalions. Lack, what noise is this? What is the matter? Osric! Save yourself, my lord. The young Laertes in a riotous head obeys your officers. Laertes? The rabble call him lord. They cry, choose we. Laertes shall be king. Most cheerfully on the false trail, they cry. Oh, this is Kanta, you false Danish dogs. The doors are broke. Oh, thou vile king, give me my father. Calm me, good Laertes. Where is my father? Dead. But not by him. Let him demand his hell, good How came he dead? I'll not be juggled with. For hell allegiance. Bows to the blackest devil. Let come what comes. Only I'll be revenged most truly for my father. Good Laertes, that I am guiltless of your father's death and am most sensibly in grief for it. It shall as level to your judgment, pierce as Jay does to your eyes. What noise is that? Oh, he dry up my brain. Oh, Rose of May, dear maid, kind sister. Sweet Ophelia, 
Oh, heavens. Oh, is it possible a young maid's wits should be Are as mortal well? as an old man's life? There's Rosemary. That's for remembrance. Ophelia. Oh, Liz. Pray, you love, remember. And there's pansies. That's for thoughts. Hadst thou wits and didst persuade revenge, it could not move thus. There's fennel for you and columbine. There's rue for you. Oh, sweet maid. And here's some for me. We may call it herb of grace or Sundays. You may wear your rue with a difference. There's a daisy. I would give you some violets, but they withered all when my father died. Oh, they say he made a good end. For Bonnie, sweet Robin is all my joy. Thought and afflictions, passion, hell itself, she turns to favor and to prettiness. And will it not come again? And will it not come again? No, no, he is dead. Go to thy deathbed. He never will come again. God, have mercy on his soul. And of all Christian souls, I pray God. God be with you. Do you see this? Oh, God! Laertes, I must commune with your grief, or you deny me right. You must put me in your heart for a friend. Will you be ruled by me? I, my love, good Lord. So you will not all rule me to a peace. I pray you, go with me. And we shall jointly labor with your soul to give it due content. Meanwhile, Hamlet, suspecting some treachery of the subtle king, had escaped from the vessel bearing him to England when the ship was attacked by pirates. In the hope that the prince might do them a good turn at court, the pirates had set him ashore at the nearest port in Denmark. But the king was contriving a new destruction for Hamlet. Attend, Laertes. Hamlet comes back. What would you undertake to show yourself indeed your father's son, more than in words, to cut his throat in the church? And so the king set on Laertes to challenge Hamlet to a friendly bout of fencing, wherein Laertes, instead of a blunted sword, would use one with a point... And poisoned. Let's further think on this. If this should fail... Soft. I have it. And to make sure of Hamlet, if Laertes failed, the king planned that a bowl of wine should be prepared in case Hamlet at the fencing should call for drink. And into this, the treacherous king would infuse a deadly venom. Oh. But say, what noise? How now, sweet queen? One woe doth tread upon another's heel, so fast they follow... Your sister's drowned, Laertes. Drowned? Oh, where? There is a willow grows aslant a brook that shows his hoar leaves in the glassy stream. There with fantastic garlands did she come of crow flowers, nettles, daisies, and long purples. There on the pendant boughs her coronet weeds clambering to hang. An envious sliver broke when down her weedy trophies and herself fell in the weeping brook. Her clothes spread wide and mermaid like a while they bore her up, which time she chanted snatches of old tunes as one incapable of her own distress, or like a creature native and endued and her melodious lay to muddy death. Alas, then she is drowned. Drowned, drowned. Too much of water hast thou, poor Ophelia, and therefore I forbid my tears. Adieu, my lord. I have a speech of fire that fain would blaze, but that this folly doubts it. And when Hamlet, returning home, came across the fields by the castle churchyard... Hath this fellow no feeling of his business that he sins at grave making? Custom hath made it in him a property of easiness. <laughs> it is e'en so. That skull had a tongue in it and could sing once. How the knave jowls it to the ground. I will speak to this fellow. Whose grave's this, sirrah? 
mine, sir. <laughs> oh, a fit of clay for to be made. For such a guest is me. I think it be thine indeed, for thou liest in it. For you lie out on, sir, and therefore it is not yours. For my part, I do not lie in it, and yet it is mine. Thou dost lie in it to be in it and say it is thine. It is for the dead, not for the quick, therefore thou liest. Tis a quick lie, sir. Twill away again from me to you. <laughs> What man dost thou dig it for? Oh, for no man, sir. For what woman, then? For none, neither. Well, who is to be buried in it? One that was a woman, sir, but rest her soul, she's dead. <laughs> How absolute the knave is. How long hast thou been a grave maker? Why, I've been sexton here, man and boy, thirty years. How long will a man lie the earth ere he rot? Your faith, if it be not rotten afore her dial, ask you some eight year or nine year now. Is a skull now that lay near the earth three and twenty years. Oh, whose was it? Oh, 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 oh some mad fellas it was. <laughs> Who should think it was? Nay, I know not. Oh, what a pestilence on him for a mad rogue. A poor, a flagon, a Rhenish on my head once. <laughs> <laughs> the same skull, sir, was Yorick's skull. The king's jester. Yes. In that. Let me see... Alas, poor Yori. I knew him, Horatio. A fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. He had borne me on his back a thousand times, and now, how abhorred in my imagination it is, my gorge rises at it. Here hung those lips which I have kissed, I know not how oft. Where be your jibes now, your gambols, your songs? Your flashes of merriment that were want to set the table on a roar. Not one now to mock your own grinning, quite chop fallen. But soft, but soft aside, here comes the king, the queen, the courtiers. Who is this they follow and with such maimed rites? Couch me a while and mark. What ceremony else? That is Laertes, a very noble youth, Mark. Sir Priest, what ceremony else? Her obsequies have been as far enlarged as we have warranted. Her death was doubtful, and but that great commander sways the order, she should in ground and sanctified been lodged till the last trumpet. I tell thee, churlish priest, a ministering angel shall my sister be when thou liest howling. What? The fair Ophelia? Sweets to the sweet farewell. I hope thou shouldst have been my Hamlet's wife. Hold off the earth, the earth a while till I have caught her once more in mine arms. Now, pile your dust upon the quick and dead till of this flatter mountain you have made to our top old Pelion or the skyish head of blue Olympus. What is he whose grief bears such an emphasis, whose phrase of sorrow conjures the wandering stars and makes them stand like wonder-wounded hearers? This is I, Hamlet the Dane. The devil take thy soul. Oh, praise well. I pray thee, take thy fingers from my throat. What's the matter? Hamlet! 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 Hamlet oh, my lord, be quiet. Oh, I will fight with him upon this theme until mine eyelids can no longer wag. Oh, my son, what theme? I loved Ophelia. Forty thousand brothers could not with all their quantity of love make up my sum. Oh, he is madly at him. The love of God forbear him. Hear you, sir. What is the reason that you use me thus? I loved you ever, but it is no matter. Let Hercules himself do what he may. The cat will mew, and dog will have his day. Good Gertrude, set some watch over your son. Come, Horatio. There it is. Strengthen your patience in our last night's speech. We'll put the matter to the present push. My Lord Hamlet, good Horatio. Oh, good Osric. Your Lordship is right. Welcome back to Denmark. I humbly thank you, sir. My Lord, His Majesty sends to know if your pleasure holds offence with Laertes now, or that you will take longer time. I am constant to my purposes. They follow the King's pleasure. The King and Queen and all are coming down. In happy time. You will lose this wager, my Lord. I do not think so. Since he went into France, I've been in continual practice. I shall win at the odds. But thou wouldst not think how ill... All's here about my heart, but it is no matter. Nay, my good lord, if your mind dislike anything, obey it. I will forestall their repair hither and say you are not fit. Not of which we defy augury. There's a special providence in the fall of a sparrow. It is not to come 
If it be not to come, it will be now. If it be not now, yet it will come. The readiness is all. Since no man hath aught of what he leaves, what is to leave the times? Let be. Pardon, sir, I have done you wrong. I do receive your offered love like love and will not wrong it. Oh, Give us the foils. Come on. Give them the foils, young Alfred. Come, one for me. Well, this is too heavy. Let me see another. This likes me well. These foils have all a length. Aye, my good lord. Set the scoops of wine upon that table. Come, begin. And you, the judges, bear a wary eye. Come on, sir. Come, my lord. One. No. Judgment. A hit, a very palpable hit. Well, again. Stay. Give me drink. Hamlet, here's to thy health. Give him the cup. Uh, I'll play this bud first. Set it by a while. Come, sir. Ah, another hit. What say you? A touch, a touch. I do confess it. <laughs> Our son shall win. Here, Hamlet, take my napkin. Rub thy brows. The queen carouses to thy fortune, Hamlet. Good, madam. Gertrude, do not drink. I will, my lord. I pray you, pardon me. It is the poison cup. It is too late. Here's drink, dear Hamlet. I dare not drink yet, madam. By and by. <laughs> Come, let me wipe thy face. My lord, I've hit him now. I do not think it. And yet it is almost against my conscience. Come for the third, Laertes, you Badelli. Say you so? Oh, Come on. Oh. Have it, you now. Nice. Arch. Lord Hamlet's wounded. Straight and beat it. My son. Hush, there it is. Hamlet has seized the poison sword. Nay, come again. No, I am slain. They bleed on both sides. How is it, my lord? How is Laertes? Oh, Osric, I am justly killed with mine own treachery. Ah! What does the queen? Look to the queen there. Look to the queen there. Oh. She swoons to see them bleed. No, no the drink, the drink. Oh, my dear Hamlet, the drink, the drink, I'm poisoned. Get you! Oh, 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 villainy, hold at the doors, be locked. Treachery, seek it out. It is here, Hamlet. Hamlet, thou art slain. In thee there is not half an hour of life. The treacherous instrument is in thy hand, unbated and envenomed. The foul practice hath turned itself on me. Thy mother's poison. I can no more. The king... The king's to blame. The point. Envenomed, too. Then venom. Do thy work. Go. Oh, the king, the king. Yet, if and be pens, I am but hurt. Here, thou incestuous, murderous, damned Jane. Follow my mother. Exchange forgiveness with me, noble Hamlet. Mine and my father's death. Come not upon thee, nor thine on me. Heaven make thee free of it. I follow thee. I am slain, Horatio. Wretched queen, and you. You that look pale and tremble at this chance, had I but time, as this fell sergeant death is strict in his arrest. Oh, I could tell you, but let it be, Horatio... I am dead. Thou livest. Report me and my cause aright to the unsatisfied. Never believe it. I am more an antique Roman than a Dane. Here's yet some liquor left. Is that a man? Give me the cup. Uh, Let go. By heaven, I'll have it. Uh, oh, God, Horatio. What a wounded name. Things standing thus unknown shall live behind me. If thou didst ever hold me in thy heart... Absent thee from felicity a while, and in this harsh world draw thy breath in pain to tell my story. <laughs> oh, I die, Horatio. This potent poison quite o'ercrows my spirits. The rest, 
the silence. Now cracks a noble heart. Good night, sweet prince, and flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. Let four captains bear Hamlet like a soldier to the stage, for he was likely, had he been put on, to have proved most royally, and for his passage, the soldier's music and the right of war speak loudly for him. Take up the bodies. Such a sight as this becomes the field, but here shows much amiss. Go, bid the soldiers shoot. Curtain has fallen on the Theater Guild on the Air production of Hamlet, sponsored by the United States Steel Corporation and the Radio Corporation of America. We express our thanks to our stars, John Gielgud as Hamlet, Dorothy McGuire as Ophelia, and Pamela Brown as the Queen, and to Esme Percy, who was featured as the Ghost. Our thanks also to the other members of the cast, whom you heard in these roles, as Horatio, John Merivale, as the king, Barry Kroger, as Polonius, George Howe, as Laertes, Richard Leach, as Bernardo, Peter Bull, as the grave digger, Elliot Maycomb, as the player queen, Hazel Terry, as Osric, David Evans, and as the priest, Norman Bird. The Theater Guild on the Air is under the supervision of Lawrence Langner and Teresa Halburn with our minor Marshall executive producer. S. Mark Smith is editor. Music was composed and conducted by Harold Levy. Dorothy McGuire may currently be seen starring in the 20th Century Fox film, Mr. 880. John Gielgud and Pamela Brown are currently starring on Broadway in the Theater Guild, John C. Wilson and H.M. Tennant production, The Ladies Not for Burning, by Christopher Fry. Your announcer is Norman Brokenshire. The United States Steel Corporation hopes that you'll be with us next Sunday at the same time.